from Mombasa, Kenya. Welcome to Sunday Worship at United Presbyterian Church of Goldfield. We're glad you're here to worship with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed, we are thankful that you are worshiping with us today. Before we get to our call to worship and our worship service, I just want to give you a preview of next week. Next week, we will have our pregame chat on Facebook like normal, half an hour before the worship service goes live. We will have a church service on both YouTube and Facebook at 10 o'clock. And then following that church service, we will have our annual congregational meeting. Our bylaws for the church require that we meet the fourth Sunday of January. And what we do in that meeting are primarily two things. One, we review 2020. And two, um, as a congregation, we vote and we approve the terms of call uh, for the pastor, which is me. So we do need a quorum for that meeting. That means we need at least 13 people to log on to Zoom and, and be able and willing to vote. Um, in order for that meeting to, to count. Uh, but I encourage you to please do come to that meeting because this year we're also going to take advantage of that gathering time on Zoom to ordain and install our new elders for 2021. So we will be ordaining Michaela Johnson and Adam Goodell. This is their first time being an elder and serving on session. So we'll ordain those two and then we will install them as session members along with Syl Finnell, who will be returning to a session after a year off of it. So please do plan a little bit longer time. I'll try to keep church to about half an hour next week. And so following that worship service, we will hop on Zoom and do the business of the church. But really, the business is part of our service and part of our love and worship. Um, so I do hope to see you there. The Zoom information will be emailed out with the bulletin next week. I'll also make sure it's posted on Facebook and on our church blog, which you can find at www.goldpress, so G-O-L-D-P-R-E-S dot org, O-R-G. So hopefully we can get you connected. If you don't have a computer with Zoom on it, um, you can also dial in by phone and be present. At least you'd be able to listen in and we can hear you talk. So I encourage you even... Um, even in this time of separation and not being able to gather in person, please show up. Please come and, and be counted, not just for our quorum, but remind us um, that you too are part of the body of Christ. For now, though, let's turn to our call to worship. Sadness 
not only our individual sins, but the sins of the body. We know that we are humans who fail time and time again, but we know that God also knows that and has made a way forward out of that sin and destruction. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of all truth and wisdom, we ask that you give us your Holy Spirit. Bring alive these words from scripture. May we follow the living word. May you guide us. May you open our hearts and minds to receive your call. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is a call story. We meet a young boy named Samuel, and we see him just as he's drifting off into sleep. Samuel is being raised essentially by Eli, who was a priest. The backstory on Samuel is pretty great. His mom, Hannah, begged and pleaded with God and with Eli, the priest, to have a baby. And once, once she did, she turned that baby over, gave him to God and let Eli train him up to serve God in the temple. Um, this is the story of God calling out to Samuel. This is 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in the room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, 
Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Here I am. And ran to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. Then the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Our second scripture reading today is a beloved psalm. This is Psalm 139. Listen close for a description of how, how God sees us, what that relationship is like between us and God. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6, and then 13 through 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How do people get a hold of you? If they need to get a message to you, if they need to tell you important news, if they need to ask you for a favor, how do they reach out to you? I would bet, like me, many people just call on the phone. Maybe you have a landline or a cell phone. Sometimes people send a text message, maybe even a letter in the mail. There are different social media apps that might be used, like a Facebook message or Twitter, Instagram. I doubt they make a TikTok video, but maybe. <laughs> There are a lot of ways to communicate. We have a lot of ways as humans to get in touch with each other, to have conversations. Uh, sometimes reception is clearer than others. Um, it shouldn't surprise us, maybe, that God has different ways to reach out to us, too. It seems to me that when people ask, what made you decide to be a pastor? They expect some kind of a very clear call story, something like we read in this passage from 1 Samuel. I wish I had the kind of story where I could say, well, one night I was getting ready to fall asleep and God said, Sarah. And I said, I am listening, God. <laughs> and then God said, you're going to go be a pastor in Goldfield, Iowa. Um, that's not how it works. We discern our path in different ways. We listen to, to the wisdom from family members and close friends, 
The church hopefully helps nurture and guide us along our ways, but we don't often get that crystal clear communication that we see here from Samuel. Uh, God calls out to Samuel directly. It's easy then to assume that that kind of conversation with God is for other people. Other people may have that close of a connection where they know clearly without a doubt what God is telling them to do or how God is telling them to live. The rest of us maybe feel like we're left more in the dark. We just, we don't always know the path meant for us to take. I kind of want to take this idea of discerning God's will and flip it on this end for us today. I was struck uh, reading through this psalm by a, a phrase, by an idea that just grabbed a hold of me. I don't know if that happens to you ever when you're reading scripture. But I was struck by this idea that God discerns our thoughts. God discerns our innermost thoughts. There's this intimacy in Psalm 139, this sense that God knew us before we were much more than a blob. God knew our life's plan and how it would unfold while we were still in the womb, before we were even born, before we took a breath, before we cried, before we knew how to walk, before we knew how to talk or communicate. And there's something about that bond that God has with each one of us that I think no matter how hard we think about it, no matter how deep we dive, we can't ever fully comprehend this love that God has for each one of us as his creation, as his children. God calls us, but I think it's important for us to realize that it's not some existential dilemma, some huge choice we have to make. It's not some, some kind of decision that rests entirely on us. God calls us to be who he has created us to be. Yeah, there are things we can do that slow down that progress. There are things we can do that maybe require us to U-turn later to get back on track. But today, I want you to just stop and think for a minute about the fact that you were created, that you are loved by a God who takes time to discern your thoughts. This is a God who desires this close, intimate relationship with us. This is a God that initiates that action of getting to know us. And it's humbling and Honestly, sometimes it's terrifying to think of a God that knows our thoughts and knows our words before we even say them. Maybe you like me, you're a verbal processor. Sometimes I don't know what I think until I start talking. But God knows what we think before we've even named or put words to those thoughts. God has a plan for us and God calls us and puts us, I believe, exactly where we're supposed to be. It's reassuring to me to think that the God who made me, the God who wove me together, who created me with all of my quirks, with all of my faults, with all of my gifts, that God is following through. It's the same for you. God is guiding you, maybe in ways you don't even notice, and maybe I would love to hear it. Maybe there's even been a time where you could discern clearly God's voice calling to you. Maybe there was a moment where you had a phrase or a verse or even a song lyric or God's voice calling out to you. I don't know how often that actually happens. I do know that the lesson I'm taking away from this first Samuel passage this week and from this section of Psalm, the lesson that that I want to pass on to you and encourage you to think about this week is this. God does call us and we need to strain to listen to that voice, whether it's actually a voice like Samuel hears, whether it's just that spirit's nudge or little kick directing us the right way. But what we learn from Samuel is how we are to respond to that, how we ought to, to respond. When God calls your name, the answer is, 
God, I am here. I am listening. May we be open to God's call on our lives as individuals, as a community, as the fellowship of believers. May we rest knowing that God wove us together. God created us to be a certain way. And God's plan is beyond our comprehension. Just because we don't understand what God is doing doesn't mean that there's not a plan, a plot unfolding, a purpose behind the actions we question. May you feel richly blessed by a God who created you a certain way, a particular creature whose life will reflect and glorify God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. She delivers a lot of babies, and we have, uh, many of us have followed along on her journey um, into medical mission. She has a blog that shares stories and insight. Um, we've met her. Um, some people helped raise her, <laughs> um, but we have had her come back and hosted a gathering where she shared part of her story. But I wanted, I wanted more people to hear about the McCurries, to see a glimpse of life on the other side of the globe. Remember, we are connected not just with people in our church or in our denomination, but we are connected in the body of Christ around the whole world. And here is just a glimpse of Dr. Ashley McCurry's situation and life in Kenya. Our congregation has decided to send her another support check to in encourage her to continue following God where God leads. And I would invite you also, as you listen to her story, to consider if you could partner and support her ministry as well. Here's that conversation. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Goldfield. Uh, my dad is Ron Reister, so grew up on the acreage out there by Goldfield and then, um, went to college at Wartburg College in Waverly, Iowa. And that's when I really um, came to faith kind of in my own way. 
uh, it was kind of the moment where I realized that Jesus died for my sins and not just for the sins of the world, you know, but it became very personal for me. Um, and that was in, in college. And so um, fast forward to medical school. Um, I, I went to a meeting um, about medical missions. It actually wasn't even really about medical missions. It was about uh, using your gifts to serve the Lord. Like acknowledging that God had gotten me to medical school was getting me through medical school and how was I going to turn around and use that to serve him and it was like a light bulb moment for me like oh yeah I mean this this is the God that I pray to before every test and you know the same God that I've been asking to help me get through this like why wouldn't I use this to serve him and so that was kind of the aha moment um and then in residency we kind of heard of um full-time medical missions from a friend and then we stumbled upon Samaritan's Purse and one thing led to another and here we are in Kenya. So. <laughs> I got sick in August, the very end of August, um, and it hit me really fast. It was like one day I was perfectly fine and the next day I couldn't breathe. Um, and so for the next I, I mean, three months, honestly, um, I was back and forth between a larger, there's a larger missionary hospital um, called Kijabe in Kenya. And so I was back and forth between that larger hospital and our home in Kapsuar and just trying to get the help that I needed and, and trying to figure out, you know, what to do next. Um, and just trying to let my body heal. Um, I mostly had um, trouble breathing, trouble with my lungs, and then also my heart was affected. So my heart still kind of does some crazy things when I stress it out. So um, it's been a trial, honestly. It's been one of the hardest things that I've ever been through. Um, and there were some really scary times, you know, in the last four or five months um, where, I mean, I just found myself in a place of like complete helplessness. Like I just had to rely on the Lord because that's all I had, you know, um, yeah, but God is good, and um, through it all, like, he's just taught me <clears throat> to rely on him. He's taught me um, to be faithful and, like, just to rest in him, because I think with my, with my doctor brain, I just try to go, 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 go. What's next? What's the evidence saying? What's, what are the experts saying? What are, you know, what's the follow-up treatment? What's the plan, you know? And I feel like I've learned just to, just to rest and just to trust in him and just to like wait on him, um, which is a really beautiful thing. Um, we actually are, we're on the coast right now in Mombasa, Kenya, um, because the high altitude we found out was slowing my recovery and um, was keeping me hypoxic. So my oxygen levels were too low. Um, so we've been here for about a month and it's been amazing. It's been like, a time of healing. Um, my lungs are so much better at sea level than they are at high altitude. So like I can, I can live a normal life at sea level. I can teach my kids and cook and clean and, and do rehab and um, all of those things without chest pain and without low oxygen levels. So <clears throat> that's been really, really amazing. And if I start to talk about how thankful I am for that, I will just, I will just cry <laughs> because like, I'm just so, when you like, when you go through such a dark time where you don't know what the future is going to hold, you don't know if this is ever going to go away. And now to be here and to be able to function like my normal self, it's such a blessing. And it's something that I will not take for granted again. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the ability to, to take care of your children and cook meals and clean your house and do all those things. Like we take them for granted every day, but not, not anymore, you know, like, um, yeah, I'm finally getting a glimpse of real life again. And I'm just really, really thankful for that. You know, I, I've never had that experience of like a vocal calling, um, from God. I have felt led by the spirit. I felt like a strong pull, um, in my heart, maybe to do certain things, to pray for certain people. Um, those types of things but as like yeah I've never I've never heard like an audible voice of God
Okay, so first of all, prayer. Um, we have, I mean, I think we all we all have big things coming up, but you know, in the near future, like next week, I am going back to Capsuar, um, and our prayer is that my lungs have healed and I can go back to work. Um, I can go back to helping the moms and helping the babies, and I can bring some relief to my colleagues who have been working really, really hard. So praying that, um, praying for complete healing in my lungs and in my heart so that I can go back to work. Um, that's a huge, it's a huge prayer right now. And, you know, I trust God. I believe, I mean, I know that he can do it. Um, and I trust that he will do it. Um, and so we're just praying that, that we can see that through. Um, another prayer request is our, um, our son, Oscar. Uh, we need to get another passport for him, an updated passport. Um, and then we need to get him another visa, a tourist visa, so we can visit the States again. And so that's all in process right now. But of course, it's really, really difficult. Um, and it's it's going to take God's hand to get it done. So um, praying that, that we can get a passport and a visa so that we could visit home as a family again. We, we can only do what we do. Like we can only live in Kenya and serve in Kenya. And um, yeah, we can only be here with the support of, of the churches and of, you know, people of our brothers and sisters in Christ. So that definitely is still a need. We, we do still need uh, people to support us financially. Um, and if you're able to do a monthly gift, um, that I mean, it's a huge blessing to us. And honestly, we couldn't do what we do without that. Um, so if you are able and feel called to give, like we appreciate that so much. We don't take that lightly. Um, and honestly, it's really humbling to be supported um, by, you know, such a small community. Like we, we come from small town, Iowa. And, you know, to see a little community like rise up and, and send us to Kenya, like it's a really beautiful thing. And it's something that... Um, yeah, like we, we don't take it lightly. We want you to know that we're so thankful for all of the support that you all have given us over the years. Um, yeah, and it's our prayer that we can continue to work here and um, yeah, hope that you all can, can um, partner with us financially too. I, growing up in, in like small town Iowa, you know, like I didn't even really know that medical missions were a thing. Um, and that's, I, I don't mean that to say like, that's the fault of the church, but like, I think in your like self-absorbed teenage mind, you don't even know, yeah, <laughs> what else is, is out there. And so it's kind of fun to know that, like, that we can be that connection for people, you know, that, that they like, they personally like, oh, I know her, or, I know her dad or, or I know Mike's parents or, you know what I mean? Like that we can be that connection for people. So that's kind of fun.
this bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it Your charge this week is to listen close, be ready to respond, I am here God, and then be willing to follow wherever God leads. Receive your blessing. May God be above you to bless you and beneath you to hold you up. May the Holy Spirit go in front of you to guide you and be behind you to prod you along life's way. And may Jesus Christ be alongside you as your closest friend and dearest companion. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Since you knew